Hey, what's your name? I'm back here with Fireman Three Houses. Oh man, that was a quick load load. Ah, because we're having some words from Gerald before we carry on here. Azure Moon. Harp string moon. Harp string, how poetic. The king's triumphant return. Triumphant, whoa. <laughs> it's a little fast. He's still not, I don't think triumphant is the word to describe his mood. He was Following the having a thing with me in the stables last night. Or was it the stables or were you still at the Great Bridge of Merton? No, we were right. troubled mind turns to the kingdom capital and how he might end the chaos plaguing Fargus once and for all. Hey, good man. It's about time. Whoa, that person. Oh, I thought they were like really angry. The one with the seeds on the bottom left, sort of. But they were kind of like with a sorrowful, uh, but I thought they were like, <laughs> guys, did you know that chests and doors can be unlocked with the appropriate keys? You learn something new every day. But yes, indeed, Lee, we are heading back to the monastery to hopefully have a big sleepover and talk about all our feelings, uh, Dimitri's especially, but also to do's. I think still has some, and actually we have a few supports to get through that's, that are going on right now. But what's happening on the first of the Harp String Moon? Let's see. Our victory at Drondor was certainly a turning point for us. It didn't feel like a victory, really. We beat up Edelgard and Claude, killed a bunch of friends, and then we had to run away, because didn't Redrake say something like, The Imperial Army has more peeps coming. We should go. I guess we drove them back for now. Victory, sure, let's call it that. However, Rodrigue's death has been difficult to bear. Mm-hmm. We've lost considerable military strength and resources. What, did his people just ditch? Are there no lords we can rely on? Is there no way to secure more soldiers? Um, are there no lords we can rely on? In the kingdom, now that we're capturing stuff? They are now. I don't think House Gatia has any resources to spare. Hmm. I'm sorry. I really wish we could help. If only House Galatea had anything to give. I'm not blaming you guys, to be clear, when I said that. I was just wondering if now that we've, we've got a foothold in the Empire and the Alliance, maybe we could we could back into the kingdom and, and take over some old things that are occupied, and then we would have all their forces back. If we split up the soldiers currently defending the monastery, we should have sufficient numbers to invade the Empire. But even then... Sounds a bit presumptuous. Your Highness, you should be resting. Your wounds are still healing. Yes, that vague sword waving at the back of your head must have caused a lot of damage. I am well, I assure you. More importantly, may I have a moment of your time? Always. Thank you. I wish to apologize to all of you. I have led you down this dark path with me and have caused so much suffering along the way. Well, like Rodrig was saying, we're not all... And like Felix said earlier, it's not just compassion for you that brought us this far, but I like th the path of your sentiments. I cannot tell you how sorry I am for my behavior. There is no apology I could offer that would be sufficient. <laughs> and how do you intend to make up for my father's death? Felix, I realize words alone are not enough to repent, but I fear they are all I have. <laughs> Felix is like, no, give me your shirt too, I like it. I'm not after more empty words. I want you to speak through your actions. I know that no amount of regret can ever bring back the lives we have lost. I... I know that well. It is like... Yeah, you know that more than anyone. ...different material. Things can never be as they were. The best I can hope for is to make things whole again. Just with like a bit of cotton there, some silk there, it'll just look like we'll, we'll, we'll make quilts of our souls. Yes, this is a good idea. I wish to do the right thing from now on. That is why I have made a decision. About the Kingdom Capital? I intend to take back the Kingdom Capital. Booyah! I wish to save our people. Those who I turned my back on for far too long. <laughs> and Mercy and Ash in the background are just... Damn it. To follow my heart and do the right thing. That is the only way I can atone for my sins. Good man. Your high. Let's do this. <clears throat> if we can win <clears throat> like that, it will give us the advantage in our war against the Empire. And all the people we save too, right, Gilbert? As one who has served the royal family for ages, know that your words bring me great joy and pride. That said, I must point out that if we make for Ferdiad, the Emperor's head will slip further out of reach. Can you live with that? Would he be suggesting it if he couldn't? I still hold hatred in my heart for her, and for the ones responsible for the tragedy. That I will carry with me until death. But my life is my own. It belongs to no one else, and it is high time that I started living for what I believe in. Hey, looks like all those dialogue choices I picked yesterday had something to some effect. Dun, dun. I love the music here. Like the... 
in the drums. It sounds like like a heartbeat of like for a climactic moment. I will no so cool. longer allow the voices of the dead to bind me. This is something that I must do. No, something that I am choosing to do. That well chosen. Accomplish my aim, even if it means risking my life to do so. Understood, Your Highness. So, any objections? That was a very positive turning point. All of a sudden, none. You are correct. We cannot afford to die in vain by recklessly challenging the Empire. No, 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 no. We have to save so many people before that. <laughs> then we can die. I'm worried about Lady Rhea. But if this is the choice you've made, I support it. If they haven't killed her yet, in, after like 5.6 years, they're probably not going to do it if we take one more month. And if anything, rushing there immediately is going to just make them execute her instantly. I am at your command, Your Highness. I will follow you anywhere. My sword is at your service, your highness. I'll help too. The people in Ferdiad need us. Fine. I'll help you. In my father's stead. <laughs> we knew Felix wasn't gonna just leave him behind. But in return, you must win. You know that, don't you, Dimitri? No, no, no. He said he's choosing to win. <laughs> I do. And I swear on my father's last that we will prevail. Wow. You know, I never noticed that before, but that's actually, that, that probably means a lot more here, considering Lambert and Rodrigue were close friends. Then it is decided. It seems this war can At least. Much to discuss. Our next stop yes. Is Ferdiad, <laughs> the kingdom capital. Which sweet the shop do we liberate first? Well, onward we go. It's very well done. But we have stuff to discuss that isn't about the war cancel, Gilbert. We have stuff to discuss like, oh, how timely. <laughs> Let's talk. Which was a ruin has begun to recover its energy. However, acquiring supplies is still difficult. The people living here are struggling too. This conflict must be brought to an end soon. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised they were able to rebuild all the buildings and stuff around the monastery. Got super trashed. I quite agree. Yes. Let us seize victory together and build a new, more peaceful world. Yeah, well, that's what everyone <laughs> fighting a war says, I guess, but let's... Still. I wonder what path my life should follow once we achieve our goals. I have a few guesses about where you should go and to whom. Aren't you going back to your family? That has been my intent. Oh, good. But surely my daughter Annette must have her own path to follow. Right. Perhaps she would be happier if our paths diverged. Well, that's not something you, I mean, you can just do what you can. It's her choice, and so it's not like you have to worry too much about it, I guess. Of course, if she desires it. I will gladly return, but if she does not, hmm, I wonder if I should ask my wife to join me here, to live out our days together at the monastery. That would not be so bad a choice either. Perhaps it is the fault of last night's drink that I am indulging in such dreams of the future today. Or perhaps maybe your head's finally on straight and you're thinking about the right things and not thinking about- I, I no notice how you haven't brought up your royal duty a single time in the rest of the, in this conversation. It's important to think about the future. Yes. I've learned there is strength in focusing clearly on tomorrow, and allowing yesterday to be done. Ah, <sighs> finally! <laughs> I've only been trying to tell you that for however long. Who dat? Hey, oh. It's the old fishing guy. Hi there! Old fishing guy? A short time ago, I instructed these children in the art of fishing. Oh, wow! Thanks to you, we caught a really, really big fish in the river nearby. Aww. Is that right? Be sure you share it with your families now. <laughs> Don't eat it all yourself, you will probably die. Well. Aww. Well, look at that, Gilbert. <laughs> what happened to not smiling? I did say something about that once, didn't I? I even told you to forget you ever saw me smile. I was there. It was pretty weird. But now, I would not ask that of you. Good. Oh, thankfully. Your words <laughs> from when last we spoke have stayed with me. It was a hard image to, to purge. You s smiling, going, ah, life is good. Shut up! I didn't say it! <laughs> they bring to mind the king I first served. He told me not to dwell upon the dead. What's so, Was that Lambert, or...? The dead are dead. And those who live are not bound by them. I intend to live my own life from now on. Hey, well, look at you and Dimitri. I mean, I guess that's probably why it waited till this time for, for Gilbert to be able to say this to me. Is because Dimitri had that whole rousing speech. And it put a thing, some, some things into perspective for him, too. That's a fine smile. You 
have a fine smile as well. All right. <laughs> so we first met. No matter how our titles or positions change, I hope you will always remain yourself, Professor. And I hope you go back to your wife soon. It can take some more leave if you need it, honestly. All right, fine. I guess he's going to keep fighting with us. Fair, 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 fair. You're curious to know how to reach? Yes, please, Timmy. What are you doing? Sleep evades me, so I thought I'd get in some extra training. I was just about to finish. Perhaps it is the gloomy weather, but I am feeling the sting of wounds that should have healed long ago. You mean emotional ones, I take it. What wounds? The injury I got when that girl stabbed me after the battle at Grondor. Oh, no, the one from like a week ago. <laughs> no, I think that's hurting because it's you got stabbed a week ago. Her eyes were filled with revenge, just as mine once were. Also a week ago. Who was she? I don't know, but I have a guess. Ah, I suppose I haven't told you about that yet. What, your guess? Or how you were torturing Randolph to death? Because I was there for that part. What are you talking about? I was attacked inside the monastery the other day. It caused quite the uproar. The ones who attacked me were some of the youths we taught swordsmanship to once upon a time. Oh, no, I haven't heard this, no. Are you okay? Of course. I could capture the lot of them with my eyes closed. Damn. <laughs> Wait, how, was that while, or during, or before, were you still s baggy eyes, Dimitri? Did you kill them? It seems they were raised by a group of thieves we put down five years ago. Oh, really? They were raised by a group of thieves, but then were also at the monastery in uh, five years ago when you were training them? I heard Lady Rhea took custody of them, claiming that the children were innocent. Oh, so they were orphans because we... Oh, damn. I have taken so many lives, and with each one, I face hatred. During the last five years especially, my life was not so different from that of a wild beast and that young girl's brother. At some point, I must have... That is why I thought it only natural that someone would retaliate someday. Because I hated. Because I stole and... Because I killed. But with those children, it's different. We drew our blades with the best of intentions. Only to hurt them in the end. I suppose this is yet another thing we will just have to live with. Yeah, I mean... It's what heroism is. Tolerating the things that no one else can do. It's part of the... I feel the same way. It is part of the job, but I feel the same way. <laughs> the one who chose to fight. It is my responsibility to confront this anguish and the true nature of war until the day my life comes to an end. We can confront it together. Thank you. You know, Professor, there is something that I only recently realized. <laughs> that you really stink and should take a bath? Yeah, smell like a thousand corpses. Sorry, too soon. I never knew it could be so comforting to have someone standing by my side. Oh. <laughs> That's real sweet. Does he have an A plus with you, actually? Because I know, I think Edelgard does, and I think Claude does too. No, actually. Weird. I sort of assumed all the, the lords would have one. Maybe Claude doesn't then. So, uh, Dimitri's got some talking to do. <laughs> He's only up to C with Gilbert. <laughs> they have an ending together? Wow. All right, well, everyone get tucked in. We're, we're having a sleepover at Shea Byleth, and we're talking about our feelings today. Let's start with the Dimitri one then, because we're going to have so many of his. Uh, Dimitri and Flane, why not? Up this late practice, Lance, are you? I guess this is just after he talked to me. <laughs> and what about you? Have you got something on your mind again? You really should go to bed. It is chilly out, and you could catch cold. What's the matter? Have you been having nightmares? Well, she doesn't really like going to sleep broadly, for reasons. Well, in a certain sense, <laughs> yes. Can you spare a moment? Of course. <laughs> Her face just completely covered by his massive shoulders in that shot. <laughs> Whoa, look at them standing side by side like this. This is really weird. We spoke, in a good way. The situation. Your words that night touched me deeply. It felt as though I had been punched in the gut. <laughs> so thanks for that. Really could have used with less gut punching, emotionally speaking. But more importantly, I think I owe you an apology. I lied to you. You did? Do you recall when I ate that meal you cooked and I told you it was delicious? The truth <laughs> it was actually garbage. No matter what I eat, I can scarcely taste it. I have not had my sense of taste for 
nine years now. Oh, what a funky coincidence. That's just when you started down this path of depression and mor morbid hatred of yourself and others. Uh, my cooking certainly is not something people often compliment me on. I am sorry. When I said <laughs> the food was good, I was just saying what I thought you would want to hear. An apology is not necessary. You were only trying to be kind, after all. He did lie, after all, even, even still, though. In the end, I am not sure it was kind. Just the same, it was nice to hear. Oh, hey, I have an idea. What if you sampled some really pungent food, or something extremely spicy? Maybe that would... Flame. Uh, I like your cooking. I cannot taste it properly, but in my book, it is truly delicious. Because it's the thought that counts. No need for the flattery. Anyhow, maybe someday you will get your taste back. I hope then you will be able to compliment me sincerely about my cooking. You know, provided he actually does like it. <laughs> That's nice. That's the first time, at least in the order of supports we've done, I think that Dimitri has opened up about him not actually being able to taste anything because of the stuff. That happened. And then Gilbert, we're watching this one, obviously. To max support, oh, she read the letters, I take it. I have a moment? Of course. I... I read all your letters. You never stopped writing them, did you? So there were ones even up to just before meeting you again at the monastery, maybe? Mm. My birthday, mother's birthday, every possible occasion, without fail. Yes. So why didn't you send any of them? If you had sent even one, we would have... I'm sure this is going to go to a place of him being like, Well, I just, I thought you would be upset. <laughs> Each time I thought to send one, I could not do so. Such behavior belittled my penance. Time passed, and with it my feelings of guilt toward you and your mother grew. Even though I wrote the letters, I could not send them. I would always talk about it with mother. If only he'd write us at least once, we'd say. He waited and waited all those long years. Couldn't even really be sure that you were alive, honestly. Considering sorry. you changed your name and all. I'm tired of hearing it, so just stop. Your apologies change nothing. Send those letters to mother. She'll be happy to hear from you. I cannot. In that case. Now? Really? Why Still? I, send them? I have given them to you. They are yours to do with as you wish. Alright then. I'll send them. You don't get to take it back afterwards, Father. You should know that they made me happy. Happy? Knowing that you were thinking of us all along. We were worried about you, Mother and I. Neither of us ever came out and said it, but we thought maybe you hated us. We're trying to forget all about us. Yeah, because honestly, I mean, with your behavior, it, it felt less like you, you weren't doing it, you weren't sending them because you felt you didn't deserve their love, and more like you thought your duty was more important, which is... I hope not what you were actually thinking. Never. I swear it on his late majesty and on my homeland. I see. All right. Then swear. Swear that someday, when this war is over, you'll come back to us. Hey, there's that now. Gilbert, we were just talking about that, and you were like, I don't know if she wants me back. That's a straight up, you can't deny it now. I hear you, Annette. I will return without fail. No matter what. That's a promise you just made. If you break it, I'll never speak to you again. Yes, I promise. <laughs> Great. Now I'm positively elated. I can't wait until we're all a family again. I look forward to it, Annette. More than anything. Ah, oh, finally. Jeez. It's only been six years. Well, I'm no, I mean, it, she he was gone before she was even, she, she was like 13 or something like that? So if she's 20... How old is she? 22, so she's like 9 or 10 years, yeah. Jinkies, my guy. Man, it would be really lame if one of you died. Better not have that. Uh, so let's jump back to another Dimitri one now. Uh, Dimitri and Mercedes. Sure. Good evening, Dimitri. Have you come to pray? Based on his j stance, gestures, and mannerisms, I would say, yeah? Something like that. And you? Oh, yes, that's why I'm here. I love how calm and peaceful the cathedral is this late at night. It really is. Coming here on a quiet night always makes me think of those who aren't with us anymore. I'm sure they would like that every now, once in a while anyways. Not not every single night. We've lost so many in this war. Too many to count. I hope they all get to live in eternal happiness at the goddess's side. These prayers are all I have to offer. You are a kind soul, Mercedes. Every tweet. I think you're kind too, Dimitri. 
Sometimes to a fault. Retweet. <laughs> kind? Me? No, not at all. I am just a killer. A disgust. Well, not just. There's, there's, there's a bit of a disgusting monster killer in there somewhere. But it ain't, it ain't all. But why do you kill? For the sake of your loved ones? Those who have passed? Well, you could argue that before his mentality was, he would say that, but it wasn't actually true. Real monsters kill for selfish reasons. They're incapable of expressing sorrow when they kill. So please call yourself a monster. Mercedes. I... I am scared. So scared that I will forget their faces. The people who have died. Who I have killed. I cannot let myself forget them. I know that, and yet, whatever my feelings, it is all the act of a monster. It's sad, but the truth is that people forget. You may be afraid to forget the past, but you'll never be able to revisit it. Living in the present is the best we can do. We owe it to those who can't come back. If someone had said those words to me five years ago, I would be a different man today. That's a pretty high compliment. What do you want to do now, Dimitri? Continue fighting for those who have died? Not as a king, but as my classmate. What do you want to do? My own dreams. I have never given it any thought. What about you? What do you want, Mercedes? I want to keep sewing and training with you. Even after you've become king. I think he was speaking more long term. <laughs> but that's nice but as well. I have no right to stand beside you. Please. I can't hear any more of this self-deprecation. I just want to be by your side. Is that so much to ask? Mercedes, I want the same thing. If you allow it, I wish to stay by your side. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one who feels that way. You're not. We all want Dimitri to stay here with us and be safe. Let's spend a little more time here together. Just the two of us. Ah, that was good. I, earlier what she was saying, she was like, You don't kill for selfish reasons. I, like, taking that quote point blank with no context makes it sound really like, Ah, you're killing for nice. Like, it's fine. But obviously in the context of, like, a, a war. A war against, like, people, but also, like, like massive monsters and stuff. The context is slightly different. Because she's saying, Normal people in wars don't kill the number of people he has and, and survive that long of, like, a strife. Or, you know, any of us, for that matter. So I think it reads a little differently. It reads more like she's saying, The the burden you carry of, of trying to remember the people you've killed and, and also, like, just literally the, the physical act of having survived through all that for the sake of, in a twisted way before and now in a much more pure way, others. The sake of others. That is what she's commending there, I feel. And I, I'm... I would tend to agree. I mean, even if I had the physical capacity, I don't know that I would be able to bear the mental burden of, of doing all this, the, the, what they do, in a, in the name of a just cause. Gilbert and Tadu to Max. Let's just, uh... Impressive that you made Gilbert, it back. One of them apologized to the other about how things went last time. They were kind of in a heated row. It was you who saved his highness from prison. We, mm -hmm. all of us, thought you were dead. My wounds were severe, but I managed. Oh, did he maybe not actually, he maybe didn't actually pull the old switcheroo and go into Dimitri's cell and be like, I'm Dimitri, and like put a cloak on or whatever. He, he he just broke him out and then he got wounded there. Is that what happened, I guess? That makes a lot more sense. I don't know why I was assuming the other thing. So long as I draw breath, I fight for his highness. Is that so? But in my absence, you have protected him. Thank you, Gilbert, for returning to us. Hmm. Interesting. That's a, basically the opposite of what you were saying before. Stop. I left once. I have wondered if I will be forced to leave once more after this battle is done. Would you accept that? I imagine not. Forced to? What of do you mean by that? Not. You are still Gustav at heart. Even now. I am not fit to replace you. Not yet. I still have a great deal more to learn. For now, all I can do is continue to be a shield for His Highness. It is unlike you to be so talkative. I could not be silent. So long as you understand, I will leave the kingdom someday. Leave the kingdom? Why? Do you mean to go back to your family? Because they're in the kingdom, aren't they? It may not be until the day I die. Oh. Oh, I see. <laughs> I will come this war. I'm a much older man than I was when it began. Sooner or later, someone must take my place. Do not try to carry the weight alone, Dudu. 
There are many talented and well-trained officers. Work together with them to assure our king's future. Do that, and when the time comes, I will rest well. Thank you for the advice. However, yes, it is too soon to treat you like <laughs> man. You still have at least ten years of service in you. <laughs> Fargus, no. His Highness needs you. As do I. Save the old man talk for when you are truly senile. A fair point. There's no reason to let old age make one timid. Even as I work to surpass you, I still rely on you. Is that so? Well then, we have more fighting ahead of us to do. We should get to it for the future of Fargus. That was nice. I wasn't expecting that to that to be how that turned out. He kind of there was sort of like a passing of the mantle thing there of because Gilbert has sort of historically been the, the protector of the royal family or a protector. But then also he wasn't just like you're ready to do. I have no more. He was like <laughs> it was. He said it's not it's not your responsibility to do that all yourself. Even though that is kind of how to do often feels. Dimmy and Annie, let's have it. Your Highness, I have one more favor to ask. Is this about Gustav again? Matt, do you remember that? It's been like five and a half years. You're what picking up right where you left off. For you to speak with him yourself. Oh, it's not about father this time. She's already this spoken with him. I wanted to ask about you. About me? I mean, I heard all about father last time, but I didn't ask about you. Ah, oh, well, I'm afraid there is not much of interest for me to tell you. Imagine someone with a massive cross on the on, over the heart. That's not the heart. That's on the right side. My bad. And a huge cloak and cape, all black armor, and an eye patch saying, Ah, my story's not that interesting. Oh, it doesn't have to be funny or interesting. That's not why I'm asking. It's just that I thought I already knew you, but I'm not sure I really do. <laughs> yeah, you've been acting pretty strange this past period of time. I didn't know what to say to you, so I wanted to prepare some of your favorite food. I thought. But then you realized you didn't know what that was either. You'd cheer up a little. But when I got to the kitchen, I realized I didn't even know what you like to eat. I see. Well, it's a little hard to say what my favorite is. I <laughs> just don't really have any strong feelings about food. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh at that. <laughs> that said, you're pretty keen on sweet things, right, Annette? He always finds a way to, to whenever he has trouble talking about himself, he, he flips the, the topic around and asks about the other person. That's a thing I'm noticing. <laughs> yes, that's right. I'm at my happiest when I'm digging into a sweet treat. Oh, did you know there's a famous sweet shop in the capital? That's the one we're liberating first. Yes. Called it. <laughs> it often had long lines outside, didn't it? The castle guards often spoke of it. The sweets were so good. Did he just swap? They cost a fortune, but I loved them. Hang on. Yes. It often had long lines. Oh no, he he said often both times. I thought he said often the first time and often the second time in the same in the same breath. When father My was bad. still around, we all lived as a family in the capital. Since then, I've had them only a few times. Huh. How I'd love to taste them again. Say, Annette, when this war is over, where will you go? <laughs> will you be within walking distance of the sweet shop? More importantly. I heard that you were close to Baron Dominic back in the academy days. Oh, yeah, about that. We're, we we beat him up. We're, 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 you were there for that, right? I don't know that... With, with respect to diplomatic relations, it would really be cool if she went there. <laughs> that's right. But that's not where I think I'd like to go when all of this is over. I reconnected with father. So I'd like to live with my family again, in the capital. Interesting. I wonder if that's different if I hadn't had them at their support level. Also, if I'm in the capital, I'll be able to see you from time to time. Right? Ah, that settles it then. We'll have to get your father working twice as hard. <laughs> <laughs> Father's at a ripe old age now. I'd appreciate it if you didn't work him too hard. Oh, of course. I will keep that in mind. Nice. That's sweet. I wonder what she would have said if she wasn't with, uh, if I didn't have that support with Gilbert. Maybe she would have said something like, I went to school there in the school of sorcery, so maybe, so I'd, I'd like to go see some of my, like, high, my high school buds. No, I guess this is closer to high school age. No, this is more like, I guess they're more, well, this is, it, there's a wide range of ages, a range, range of ages that go to, went to the officer's academy. It was like anywhere from 14 to 23. But the school of sorcery was, I think, a little more, a little younger than that. It was more like, uh, the the sense I had was it was more like middle school <laughs> ages. Anyway, um, I don't know why I'm talking about that now. Ingrid and Seth. let's do that. These guys have been getting really close. Do you have a moment? Certainly. Have you arrived at a decision about what you would like your future to be? Much more peppy this time, a little less introspective. I think so. 
I was hoping I might ask for your opinion on the subject. <laughs> well, he loves giving it when it when it comes to this sort of thing. So sure. I'm flattered. Please proceed. I want to serve as a knight and protect my homeland. Good. I know this through and through. It has been my truth for as long as I can remember. Hey, look, no one would want to square off against you in a fight, so you would be an exceptional bodyguard. However, I feel I should choose a path my father. So be a knight for a wealthy family. There you go. <laughs> I was raised by him in a happy home, never wanting for anything, despite my family's meager finances. I owe it to him to choose a path he'd approve of. If that is the decision you have reached after such careful deliberation, then I have no objections. Well, I don't see what your objections would be worth anyway. Oh, right, well, she's asking your opinion, anyway. But may I ask you something? Please, go ahead. Have you actually had a conversation with your father about this? I have not. There hasn't been time to pay him a visit. Or really send a letter at this he point. He permit me to join this war, but I was brash about my departure. I... I left forcibly oh so you're you're not feeling cool about going back in that case it is all the more important that you speak to him probably considering how easy it would be for one of you to die right now and in in no offense you give you given your house is close to the border doesn't have much much in the way of resources and supplies yours father would be an easy target as far as kingdom nobles perhaps my father is an obstinate man at this point, I'm not sure he'd care to hear what I have to say. Is that right? Somehow I didn't have that impression of him. I mean, I know she had got all those letters before and she was like, well, father never relents, but I, I sort of had the impression it was a little more... He was always trying to, like, sort of dance around the subject whenever he was getting forceful. Actually, she's kind of glowing right now as well. I was saying last episode that Dimitri and I were glowing in the rain. Is it just... Is it always been glowy like this and I never noticed? I do not know the man well, so perhaps it is not my place to judge. Yes, neither do I. However, I do know what it's like to fret constantly over one's family. If he is as doting a father as you say, then he will want to know how you truly feel. I do not think go. he will refuse your wishes if you share them with him honestly. And if he does, then just leave, like you did last time. Of course, <laughs> if your decision remains the same after speaking with him, then so be it. Mm -hmm. Seth, thank you. You're right. I should talk to him. I've spent so much time thinking about how stubborn he is that I've neglected to acknowledge my own part in all this. Rather than blaming him, I need to recognize how stubborn I myself have been. Maybe if I open up and allow for vulnerability, he will too. I like this, because this is not a... Obviously, the, the, we could have done the supports in different order, but this is a recursive character trait of hers, this sort of... I don't know how to, to phrase it exactly, but the way she was before, where she she was like... E even though she doesn't like m makeup and that stuff, she had never allowed herself to even try at enjoying it before, because she was like, well, I... I can't go and enjoying and learning a new thing uh, because then it, it it would move me on too far past my fiance's death or whatever. So this this there's a recursive thing here about her allowing herself vulnerability, which allows her progress or something. I I don't know. There's a word there that I'm missing. That is the way. Hold your head up high and stride forward into the unknown. I will. Chin up, lance I out, or whatever your weapon actually is right now. Swords, I guess. You, for everything, you also have a lance. That was awesome. Sweet. It's weird. I don't. I don't really see how their ending could happen of that because if it's an A, they definitely have an ending. So what would it be? Just <laughs> Sedith went with Ingrid to talk about her father. Then they <laughs> parted ways and never saw each other again. And back to Dimitri. Feelings. Let's chat with them about them. Stop. Feelings. It has been eight years since I last called you by that name. To his face, anyway. You said it to Annette once or twice. Your Highness, I must deeply apologize for leaving the kingdom without permission. I was... There is no need to explain, old friend. I can guess at your reasons. The tragedy of Dusk... <laughs> well, I mean, good guess. It was it was the thing that happened eight or nine years ago. <laughs> you felt responsible for that incident and sought respite in the goddess, abandoning your name, rank, and homeland in repentance. Am I right? I have no excuses to offer. This... It was all I could think to do. I always knew you for a pious man. And I figured that if you were to leave, this is where you would end up. You have changed much. Your face does not have the same resolve it once did. This is interesting too, because we, we didn't have Gilbert on our team before the time skip, and then Dimitri wasn't able to do supports until now. So this, even though they have C, B, and A, this is, would have been the, this is the first time you would be able to get to C. So him saying that his face doesn't have the same resolve is, is a thing that they had planned for this point in the story, only... Uh, as far as we are, which is kind of interesting. You would think after his talks with Annette and everything, he would have gotten back some of his resolve. If I may, Your Highness. It's a different kind of resolve, I guess. Well, I can't disagree. 
was my I have one less eye now. His Majesty, your father. Naturally, that also included Lady Patricia and yourself as well. My father and mother are gone. No amount of regret will bring them back. My dreams are haunted by the thought that had I arrived at Dusker more swiftly, you saved my life at Dusker. I have only gratitude for you, no blame to speak of. I wish for you to remain in the kingdom, Gustav. Even after this conflict. <laughs> He's just like, but I, I just told to do that I was gonna leave. I need your strength to help rebuild the ravaged land that Fargus has become. Please, I beg your forgiveness. But there is no place left for me in that land. Well, now you're confusing me. I thought you said you were going back to Annette I see. and co. Though much has changed, your stubbornness remains. I have no desire to trouble you. If you do not wish to return, that is your choice to make. I guess he's still feeling conflict I do over it. I advise you to at least visit the place of your birth. If only for your family's sake. Yes, your highness. Thank you. I appreciate your concern. I mean, to fair, it's kind of hard to, to write them all as though they could be completely independent from each other. So it may be that the, the, they're just, this C support is meant to take place before um, his A support with Annette and such. Interesting though. I'm sure by the time he has A support, he'll, with Dimitri, he'll have some different thoughts about that. I probably don't even have that one uh, in my other file. Or like, I didn't, I probably didn't get there in any of my other files him to, because I wasn't taking uh, Gilbert very much before, until this playthrough. Flane and Dudu, Master Chef Duda or whatever. Hello. I just want to say that I'm really goes. terribly sorry. For what? I, um, I tried to cook <laughs> on my own. It was an absolute disaster. Adding that seasoning. Adding all that seasoning. <laughs> uh, what a mistake. I'm, I'm, I'm picturing, like, <laughs> Flame just, like, like she's, has, she's got, like, a steak there grilling, and she's just like, ah, let's, uh, she pulls out, like, a thing of this, like, labeled steak spice, and she's like, shh, shh, shh. <laughs> Mistakes happen. But chef, that is to do. I defied your instructions, quite blatantly, I might add. To to not do it until you had mastery of all the basics I or tried whatever. To cook before I had gained mastery over the tools. I have been a terrible student. Are you going to stop teaching me now? <laughs> is that what being you a want? little world weary now? Not in the slightest. I desperately want to learn from you. As you were then. You, I. Truly? You have not disappointed me. Yeah, man, you were just... <laughs> yeah, what, what more could a teacher ask for than that level of passion? The food itself tasted awful, of course. That, I could feel the thought you put into it. The wish to please others. To be faithful to what you've learned. You... You actually ate the food I made? <laughs> I just I, I threw it in the garbage and all. I did. The ingredients were chopped to perfection. You also seem to have learned how to handle fish without my instruction. Well, a little a little passion in that regard will take you a long way, I suppose. And Flane is nothing if not passionate for fish. I learned by watching you. You have talent. One day you will surpass me. I was certain you would be angry with me. It is decided then. You did you? Really? Someday, you will explain that something I made is delicious. Do you actually has to do ever been angry at you, Flane, or anyone? Well, he's been angry at people, but. Take, but I am willing to rise to the challenge. Please help me get there. I will. However long it takes, I look forward to it. Now, your next lesson will consist of the selection and seasoning of ingredients, <laughs> particularly with an emphasis on the amount of seasoning. Of course, Chef. Uh, to do rather. Call me whatever you want. Oh, this is so exciting! Uh, let me see. Chef Dudu, Master Chef Duda, oh, Supreme Daddy Pie. Daddy Pie, that's the one. I, I thought it was Dettles. <laughs> no, Daddy Pie. <sighs> I suppose I've already committed. Cannot take it back. Oh, I know, Chef Dettles. Oh no, that is a thing that it was said. <laughs> I that stuck in my mind about this this support chain. I can't believe that's like the only thing I remembered. <laughs> Chef Dettles. I think the only three we have now are just Dimitri's supports with a bunch of peeps. So Demi and Ingrid, let's have it. <laughs> Finally, you score a point against me on the ground. You have improved, Ingrid. <laughs> when, when we're flying, I mean, you're way too good, but... That was nothing more than a fluke. My technique was horribly sloppy that last round. That, but on the battlefield, a horribly sloppy technique that works, <laughs> as surely my battles have proved, is valid. It does not matter what sort of technique it was. You won. If this had been a real battle, I would be dead. Unless you pulled some fire and shenanigans and were like, I have to get out of here. I'll die if I don't leave. You wielded your lance well. <laughs> Without any hesitation. Has your approach changed? 
You may recall when I said I'm now able to move on. Because of you. I remember. What did you mean by it? That I finally understand a truth about Glenn. It sounds as though he died with a heavy heart. A heart that carried regret. I had suspected as much. But instead of acknowledging it, I twisted my memory of him to fit an ideal I've been upholding. I see. And that's why you were unable to stray from that ideal. Your Highness, I will not sacrifice my life for anyone, but perhaps instead, I can live my life for someone. I will pledge my life to you. And how exactly <laughs> am I meant to interpret that? Yeah, whoa! <laughs> Excuse me! <laughs> However you please, Your Highness. <laughs> oh? Well then, Ingrid, when this is all over, I want you to... Um to support and defend me as my knight. <laughs> Did you see how he said, he said that looking at her and then he was like, ah, this is a weird thing to say. And so he, he broke her gaze. I've been thinking of telling you this for a long time. We get along well, you and I. As your knight. Yes. Yes, of course. Of course I will. <laughs> I intended to do so for Damn. you. For the sake of the kingdom. Oh, rip. Brother, your highness, you and I. Our first order of business, putting this tragic war to an end. Yes. And while we're at it, do not die on me, Ingrid. Promise me that. If you have to die, please do it on someone else. <laughs> yes, your highness. I swear it on my lands. Nice. That was like, I don't think I've ever seen Ingrid, uh, like, have the, the romance panic like she just did there. Or at least that's how I interpreted that. I've, I mean, I... I am not the strongest when it comes to reading those kind of situations, but that seemed pretty- She seemed pretty dis disappointed when he said, I'd like you to be my knight. <laughs> Very sweet, though. I like how this is all just becoming- every Everyone's final supports of Dimitri are just like, Please, God, <laughs> I, I want to keep you from dying in a stupid way. I need, I just, I need to be, you. be with you for that. Answer quickly before my hand slips and I cut you in half. Support up to A. Always so ominous. Well, what is it, Felix? Sometimes you have an animal's face, contorted with anger and bloodlust. At other times, a man's with a friendly smile. Which is your true face? Do not waste your breath on questions with such obvious answers. They are both the real me. My father, my friend, Glenn. They all meant a great deal to me. And they were all brutally slaughtered. I alone survived. If I do not shoulder the anguish and regret they must have felt, who will? <laughs> So that's how you justify your atrocities. I don't know that's exactly his justification. What do you mean? I will fulfill my duty to the late king. My old man used to say that over and over like a mantra. No one seems to understand. The dead won't acknowledge your loyalty. They don't care. What a load of bunk it is, pretending to serve a corpse. You're serving your own ego. You are wrong. No, I'm not. The dead are dead. The living are living. I'm interested. It's interesting that Dimitri said you're wrong there because, I mean, in a sense, he, he, I guess it, it's, it's now it's sort of a shift, but he definitely was living when, when, it, when he was all rat mode. He was for sure, it, it was more for him than for the, for those who were dead. You have to respect that boundary. If you keep stringing gravestones around your neck, you'll snap. Even still, I cannot forget them, nor can I let them go. That I understand. Then that sounds like current Dimitri. Yourself. If you're too weak to do that, abandon your throne. Gatekeeper. Felix. I'm not immune to emotion, you know. Far from it. I haven't gone a day without questioning why my father and brother had to die while I survived. I'll bear this pain until the day I die. But I refuse to wallow in it. I have more important things to do than blubber for my whole life. <laughs> Felix, you really are growing more and more like your brother. Hmm. That's also an interesting line, because that's not really what Felix wants to hear, right? He doesn't, he, he was just, he just gave that whole thing about stop living, he's just, I mean, that is his whole thing, is don't use the dead as, don't praise the dead as an ideal, because that's how you end up with terrible honor-based systems that glorify bloodshed. But I, I, I think it reads sort of more like Dimitri's, hmm, uh, like internalizing Glenn's death here by saying, Glenn's influence lives on through Felix, I guess. Always so sarcastic and constantly looking for a fight. But deep inside, more than anyone. But he's also saying that he cares about people. Oh, it's nothing. But allow me to thank you. Your perspective has opened my eyes. <laughs> Not my intention. I couldn't stand the pathetic look on your face. That's all. 
It's another thing that Felix has said. That's really sweet. I see. If you say so, then we will leave it at that. I knew what you meant. <laughs> Boop, Felix, so silly. Definitely interesting line though, you, you remind me more and more of your brother every day, because that's obviously something that would tick Felix off. So it feels like in that moment, Dimitri isn't really saying it to comfort him, I guess. Whoa, man, you get my plus two with the do? Badass. And that's only at B support, let's see what it is. You still have scars on your back. It does you no good to languish in pain. I will procure some medicine. No, it is fine. Though they are still deep, these are from nine years ago. They do not hurt any longer. And besides, it would be a shame if the scars I got from protecting you were to fade. Mm. I bear these scars proudly. I don't know what that noise was. Think that it was worthwhile that someone like me survived. To hear you say such things. To do you say that I saved you. But do you know that you also saved me that day? If I had been unable to save anyone, I would have been the sole survivor. I would have had no reason to keep living. But I saved someone. Saved you. That and that alone has always been my crutch. That's a lot. I mean, when you think that Dimitri, um, considering the path he went down on because because of how many other people died, to say straight to Dudu's face and Dudu, who has such a high opinion of Dimitri, that the fact that you were there was, was the only reason I'm alive <laughs> and that I am anything is, um, it's pretty, that's pretty a close thing to say, especially to Dudu. When I stood to his face. before those soldiers and their swords that day, I was prepared to die, but then you suddenly appeared, and you shielded me. I knew then that a savior's hand would reach into even the deepest darkness. I still have not been able to repay that debt. I don't know. I mean, from what Demetri just said, you repaid it that day. Have you not heard a word I've said? You have saved me in countless ways. Five years ago, I did nothing but await my execution. Yeah, not to mention this. <laughs> Was it not you that saved me? That was nothing more than my duty as your That you clung to in a way that was very savior-like. Listen, to do. Perhaps you consider me to be someone special, but I think the same of you. You are irreplaceable, cherished. So stop saying that we cannot be friends. Stop saying such awful things. Please, do not look at me that way. You promised me you would build a kingdom that is proud to boast of Dusker blood. In this kingdom, where there is no distinction between the people of Dusker and Ooh. the people of Fothlin, will I finally, without reservation, be able to call you my friend? Will I, Dimitri? Yep, crying, crying now. To do. Yes, you will call me your friend again and again, no matter how many hardships I must endure. I will do all I can to bring about that world as well. To be your friend. Is what I have always wanted. That's real sweet. Is that so? I... I am glad to hear it. Oof. But until that time, we must allow no harm to befall you. So please Oof. call upon me when you walk alone at night. And even when you go out in the day, please tell me where you are going and whom you are <laughs> He's incorrigible. I suppose there is no fixing your overprotectiveness, is there? No, it's part of his charm. Don't ever change. <laughs> Ah, okay. Mm. <laughs> it had to be the last support that broke me too. Okay, I oh, this really is like a massively emotional turning point because this is where you get all of Dimitri's A supports. This is right after you have that horrible Grander field battle, and it's where it's where the it, it feels like this is the moment where all the hope kind of comes rushing back. But it's obviously bittersweet. It's like ill-gotten gains, and it keeps putting things in perspective. It puts things into all the perspectives like all at once. It's such a good point in the story for this uh, run. And just the, the, all, all the personal relationships here have so much like weight. Like when Dudu said, what is it he said? Dimitri, he just said, all Dimitri said was that I, I you're a cherished person. And that was enough to make Dudu say, don't like he, he got all backed off because he still, he still, I mean, he still has problems with that because he has problems with like this, the self-worth department there and the, the realizing of, um, sorry, <laughs> focus. The, the, the balancing of him, his own identity as not a facet of someone else's. He has a hard time sort of seeing the, the to-do person who, not the, not the protector of, oh God. 
I'm sorry, I love the game and the characters a lot. Are these the first tears of this playthrough? I don't, uh, I guess I was, I've like come very close and I was sort of tearing up last time, but I, okay. He has a hard time Shit. coming to terms with, to, to do the, the person as opposed to to do the protector of Dimitri or to do the subject of hatred of other people. And so it's just really, uh, it's really nice to see him. <laughs> a lot of his A supports. Have have um have have acknowledgement of to do with the person, and it's not just to do I'm crying about right now. It's everyone. Oh, uh, games, video games, and, and the feels they p provide. Okay. Oh, and Gilbert's coming back, and Flynn's gonna be better at cooking fish, and Mercy and Sylvain got to open up about things. That was the way long ago. Yo, oh, I'm so proud of all of them. And Felix, he said something that was really mean, but we knew it meant something nice. All right, I have to stop the episode. This is like the fourth time this game has made me like tears straining down the face. Not, uh, but the first time on camera, I guess. The and the first three times were all on my first Blue Lions runs. I think it was. Killing Bernadetta definitely took a, no a toll on me. Um, after Gerald dies and then Mercy and Annie are all like, have some sweets, Professor. That that got to me. I already mentioned the talk ranted about this, but it got to me because it's such a human gesture. And then I cried at um, Annette's <laughs> support because it was just really cute. Oh, damn. It was weird. I didn't I didn't cry at all during the the three in the middle, the the Golden Deer run, the, the Vernon Wind, Crimson Flower, and Silver Snow Runs. I, I was definitely, there were some bleak moments, but it was, I guess it was like, I wasn't prepared for it going into um, Azure Moon, and then after that it was like, yeah, I, I, I get it, this is really sad. So I kind of, I kind of like got a hold on it or something for those other three, but uh, it just all came rushing back to me when he said, please don't look at me that way. That was like, that really like <laughs> got into me just now. I'm sorry, you don't want to watch a video of me blubbering an outro for like 10 minutes. Let's just go to the, um, do I even have a question for this? Oh God, I can't think of one. Uh, there was a lot we talked about today about, I mean, this is sort of a, a, a theme of a lot of Azure Moon, but like what it means to move on, how much you move on, and how much you carry, and how much and how that impacts you, and by extension those around you, by your actions. How much of a burden is a responsibility, and how much of it is martyrdom, or whatever. You know what I mean? Why don't I have, like, tissues around when I play these games? <laughs> Seeing if there's anything I could use as a tissue? No, probably not a good idea. But then also, perspective comes into it there, too, right? Because Mercedes was saying, I hope that all all, all those um, who have passed find a, a place beside the goddess, and then, but then there, uh, there's that whole thing Ash says, which is that you know, the church believes that people go to the, be with the goddess when they die, but I think we may as well consider them that this, we should consider that they stay here because that's warmer and closer. It really is just the beauty of this um, kind of game. It's kind of storytelling is the, the perspectives of the, I mean, I mean, I, I know I've said a million times, that is really the heart of Fire Emblem games. Perspective is everything. I don't, I don't think I have a specific question. There was just a lot of, there were a lot of good sports today. <laughs> I'm so glad we got to see a bunch of Dimitri's A supports. I really love those. We have some. We have to get Gilbert in his support. I guess we should just bring him Gilbert with him for like a long time here. Ah, uh, that doesn't. Does that get him his? I think it gets you weapon experience for whatever weapon you currently have equipped, as if you're an adjutant. Good. Um, the next video <laughs> going up on the channel is gonna be. Let me check the list because I don't know if that's off the top of my head. Why did I even say it when I wasn't even looking? Oh, it's Mori, right? Or Mori, where we are back in the dream world at last, and we have a lot of, of loose ends to chase down, story-wise and quest-wise and such. So we're gonna be doing some exploring around. Full disclosure, I already recorded it, so I know where we go, but I'm, I'm trying to be vague. <laughs> Keep the mystery alive, damn it. And with that, uh, uh that's gonna be <laughs> it for this cry a -sode. I just love them all so much, and then bad things happen to them, but they have problems with their self-worth, and they, they surmount a few of those problems, but then there's acknowledgement that those problems will persist forever, because that's how human brains work, and then it's all very touching. Rah! Thank you very much for coming around. Hopefully I will see you around. I'm just gonna be out of here. Peace. <laughs>